Okay, welcome everybody. I'm Candice Borg and I am the owner of Northcote Natural Therapies and today I have the pleasure of interviewing our beautiful arts therapist, Rachel Piskins. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Candice. You're so welcome. Um, so Rachel Hiskins is a registered arts therapist, a creative couples therapist and counsellor. She was born in Melbourne and has lived overseas for a number of years, including Cambodia, Germany and the US. She has extensive arts therapy and counselling experience, encompassing a range of issues, including depression, anxiety, trauma, sexual, physical and emotional abuse, neglect, eating disorders, relationships, and grief, loss, and counseling. She has facilitated individual sessions as well as open studios, drop-in therapy, and group mandala workshops with a, with a variety of clients with multi-complex trauma, including children, adolescents, and adults from different nationalities and socioeconomic backgrounds. She offers individual arts therapy and counselling and creative couples therapy. And she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if I do say so myself. So Rachel, what is arts therapy? Okay. Um, so I guess arts therapy is a, a really cool and beautiful modality um, where you are creating something or representing something in an artistic manner. So that can look really differently. Um, so you might use um, some painting, some um, drawing, you might use metaphors um, to really um, uh, make sense of your experience and um, make meaning of your life and through creativity basically. Um, and yeah, so rather than verbalising everything, you, we're actually creating together. So you might do an image or representation of your thoughts and feelings. Um, and I will do my own and then we um, uh, yeah talk it talk it out dialogue um, yeah so I, that's probably the the gist of it so do you have to be artistic to do arts therapy not at all I think sometimes it's almost better because um, yeah uh, art therapy is very much about the process and not the end result so um, you don't actually want to have a technical beautiful piece um, you actually want to just be in it and the process and it's a really quite mindful process where you know you're pr processing the those emotions or thoughts and feelings and actually expressing it and externalizing it getting it out through your body um, and then kind of going back and being reflective and going well what what why am I feeling this way so wow. yeah if that makes sense. Yeah, so if you were, um, so someone like me who was completely not artistic and has actually had a couple of appointments with you, mm -hmm. um, so I guess if I was to draw something and it just could be a, a, a um, expression of colour, so I might just throw shapes or squiggles or something on a page, we would then um, look at what that, meant to me or why I chose that colour or why I chose that shape, is that correct? Yeah, I think generally we always kind of start at, um, you know, what you're sitting in, mm -hmm. at, in that moment. Um, so, you know, being reflective of, you know, what are you noticing in your body, um, any kind of um, linkage of, you know, past kind of thoughts, feelings, experiences, you know, it's those, if you see a bubble, you know, going in your head, it's just like, okay, let's connect this part, this part, you know, is there an unconscious belief that you might be stuck in that is kind of really automatically producing this thought and feeling that you might have not been aware of. So, you know, that dark cloud might be relating to, you know, that dark, dark experience that you might have, you know, experienced. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of a, it, it's, it's linking and, it, and it, it's an access point to really, um, uh, yeah, get the unconscious and, and make it conscious and then, um, yeah, understand it in a, a different light, I guess. 
So I guess kind of bypassing those filters that we might have consciously, we might want to speak about a certain thing, but subconsciously there might be other thoughts, feelings, or even I guess the conscious conscious feeling might be linked to something unconscious. Conscious, I can barely yeah. think of it. Yeah. Um, and uh, by viewing something externally, you can then de delve that little bit deeper into that subconscious process. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it's a really good point, Candice, because um, I think a lot of times we get stuck in our heads. Like we spend so much time in our thoughts and, um, yeah, we get stuck. So sometimes um, being able to kind of get out of here and kind of back into your body, back into kind of, um, I think that's why arts is so fundamental in you know, in, in thousands of years, you know, it's been around to heal, it's been around to teach, it's been around to, to, to um, you know, bring communities to, together. So it's really a beautiful process in that, you know, it, it, it really does tap down and connect, connects things in different perspectives, you know, and yeah, you might see something, you know, you might actually draw out, you know, your anger, and then, you know, you might speak to it and you might, there might be some kind of wisdom in there that you weren't cognitively really allowing yourself to feel. So it's just con that connection point, I guess. Yeah, love it. Yeah. So I guess that brings me to my next question. What got you into art therapy? Oh, okay. Um, I think as a child, I... I have always been artistic myself so I was that little weird little kid who you know looked up at the the leaves kind of flowing and I'd be like that's beautiful but um I think I used to always prefer to just to sit and listen to people as well so I think you know linking my artistic ability with just being present um you know has always been my baseline but I think, um, you, obviously, I went to um, university and did a painting, a fine arts degree, um, you know, and really got into abstract expressionistic paintings. And I think that's where I really started to do art therapy on myself without even noticing what it was. Mm -hmm. So it was years later that I actually was just like, what is this? Um, and I was like, damn, this is fucking cool. I'm going to, you know... I want to study further this and yeah, kept on studying. Um, but yeah, and I think it's always so like my brain actually functions or thinks in images. So sometimes even for me, words are really difficult to explain my situation or explain how I'm feeling. But if you put a representation of a visual perspective or a metaphor, then I can actually go, wow. And then I can really speak to it. Um, so I think for me, arts therapy is just a, a really beautiful fit. But um, as a therapist, I think um, I sit in it a lot um, more naturally than, you know, talk therapy or, um, yeah, any other therapeutic alliance. So, yeah, I think that's probably the gist of it. <laughs> yeah. And we spoke about before that you run and um, the mandala workshops and I happen to know that you do a few mandalas yourself. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, so I think I was introduced really first to Carl Jung's, um, uh, he was a psychiatrist and um, I think he produced mandalas every day. Um, and it's, yeah, really, but it's it's that real connection to um, that inner, you know, inner reflection. So I think that was maybe 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, obviously I have um, was lucky enough to, to um, write my thesis on um, the benefits of drawing mandalas, so, um, which was a really beautiful healing process for me as well. So I think every, um, I mean, I use it as a very mindful um practice you know for my own emotional regulation so i do notice if i'm feeling a bit eh, 
um, and, or on edge or just emotional, you know, I might just grab some paper and uh, draw it out. So I've got lots of visual diaries and um, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. And you really zone out, which is beautiful. I can't remember your question. You answered it. I said, oh, okay. yeah. We're talking about mandalas. Um, and um, I have attended one of your mandala uh, workshops and will continue to do so in the future. Um, and just for those listening, you don't need any experience at all. I am the least artistic person that I know. Um, and even I was somewhat impressed with what I created. <laughs> and I'm very impressed. It's, it's um, actually uh, framed downstairs. Uh, one of my staff members framed it for me, which was very, very sweet, but it's still framed downstairs with the date attached to it. So definitely check those out too. Okay, we've kind of somewhat uh, covered this, but um, if you want to add anything to it, so what can people expect in a consultation or even one of your um, mandala, actually let's do a consultation first and then we'll do the mandala workshop. Yeah. So how long is a, a typical consult? Okay, um, so obviously um, before this pandemic, um, I, my sessions would go for an hour. Um, but obviously with this strange landscape that we're in, um, it can, I guess, um, range from, yeah, just online, you know, um, 10, 15 to um, an hour and a half maybe. Um, but I guess what you can really um, expect is, um, yeah, rather than verbalising everything um, purely, um, I might actually get you to, to grab some pencils or whatever it might be um, and just represent your thoughts and feelings and that's a bit of a touchstone uh, of where we kind of really, then we can really jump around and, and see where we kind of navigate to. But, um, yeah. You spoke before about visual represent representations and do you mean like things like figurines or images in a book or cards or what okay. do you mean by that? Yeah, so obviously, yeah. Um, I mean, now with Zoom, um, I do have kind of some figurines, um, you know, animals and stuff, and you can kind of reflect on how you're feeling and, you know, maybe, um, maybe I can just grab one then. Um, so, say, you know, um, the little cat and, you know, with, with the world that we're in at the moment, I think sometimes possibly I, I feel a bit shy or I want to just kind of, um, kind of be affectionate, but I can't and it's really fucking annoying. Um, so, um, yeah, figurines are really cool because you can actually um, speak about um, the figurine in a third person. So, but yet you're still connecting to it, you know, from uh, a personal kind of connection, I guess. And that's just a, a easier way to maybe verbalize, um, you know, the emotional content that you're um, sitting in. Yeah. Um, but like you said, you know, um, even having some magazines doing collage, um, you know, even, um, picture cards, um, movement, you know, it's just like, you know, how are you feeling? And it's just like, you know, it could be something as simple as that, but then, you know, we can explore that movement or, or, or sound or, um, yeah. So it's really hard to really, um, describe what an art therapy session is because obviously people feel a bit more, more comfortable with a cer certain modalities, you know, they might just want to draw or they might feel more comfortable with um, just using the figurines or, or, or um, collage. So it's really up to the individual or couple. So, 
But I guess that because you um, are using things like figurines or images or um, that it would also speak really well with children because children may not necessarily know how, they don't know what, they may not know what they're feeling inside depending on their age, but they may, um, uh, they may uh, link with a, I feel like a snake at the moment because snakes slither and slide and they hide in holes and they, or whatever it may be, that's probably for example, but um, I guess that, would you say that that's, uh, does that make it easier for kids? I think so. I think um, uh, definitely it can, um, but I think it's interesting, even for adults, I think, um, you know, you might think that you're, you know, you have no connection to any art kind of modality, but you'd be surprised that, you know, even just speaking it about your experience and emotions and thoughts and feelings in um, a different way, then it kind of, like we said before, it really kind of cuts through the bullshit that you would normally um, unconsciously kind of block yourself mm. with, um, you know, or even sometimes it's really challenging to confront yourself. Like, mm. are you really locking yourself in or are you really, um, you know, what do you really fear? Like, yeah, what's really fearful in your life? So um, it's just, yeah, a different way to, to kind of go about things. So. And I guess with, um, you know, children, depending on their age, can sometimes be bluntly honest. Mm. Um, you know, mum's got a fat butt or something, you know, like they just yeah. make whatever they think. And yeah. with adults, we can often say, I shouldn't feel or I, I shouldn't mm -hmm. do this or I shouldn't feel this or, you know, I'm so lucky because, so why am I depressed? I'm so blessed because why am I feeling anxious? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. I think that um, maybe just by by representing with something else, like this image speaks to me and this is what I see in this image. I see darkness or hurt or pain or whatever that might be and then reflecting back on yourself going okay well do I feel that pain within me mm. and if I do where is it and what does it look like and then mm. seeing it that way is, is that right yeah definitely and I, that's see again I'm not the best at verbalizing it but that that's uh, yeah I'm glad that you raised that because it is very much about then you can actually visualize what that might look like Mm. And then you can connect it and, ref it, you know, that representation or, or image or whatever it might be. If you really sit with it and go, okay, what's, what's going on internally mm. and what's underneath all those layers and really connect with that and actually be open to, okay, well, maybe I do need to shift a little bit within myself. You know, do I, um, am I talking to myself? really fucking ne negatively you know how loud is that you know inner critic she's filling up the fucking room no wonder i feel anxious mm. you know no wonder i feel hyper vigilant you know and frightened so it's about you know really kind of then having a different relationship to to those thoughts and feelings and going okay well what can can i kind of reduce that sound reduce that inner critic Mine was massive when I was young, you know, and now it's like, oh, yeah, you're, you're there. That's cool. But, you know, we need to do something else. So now I guess, um, and I'm saying this because I have spoken to you uh, both um, professionally and personally, but um, I guess that you can then just now listen to your inner critic and when it comes in going, oh, well, you know, hi, hi again, you know, like, oh, what are you saying this time? And acknowledging that and going, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. But what about if it's like this? You know, like, what about if I understand that you're feeling this or that this is the um, situation we're in at the moment, but what if it was like this? What if it was different? And how do we explore what that might look like or sit in that space? Yeah, it's a, it's a constant evolution that we're in, really. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so it's, yeah. You think you might have healed some part of yourself, but then you might come around and, and, and um, connect in a different way. And then you're like, oh, fuck, 
you know, God, I'll process this shit. And then you're like, it, it kind of hits you in the face again. It's like, okay, what's the opportunity here? Yeah. And then, yeah, exploring it again. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I of, I've often heard of women who, um, after giving birth or during giving birth, have had real um, upheaval of emotion and thought processes and things that they haven't uh, have either thought that they've dealt with or um, traumas or abuse or things that they've experienced and I guess because birthing is such an intimate and vulnerable position to ever be in that it can spark stuff like that up so I I think that that would be also really interesting and you said um or I said too <laughs> that you also offer couples therapy so tell us a little bit more about the couples therapy well I think it's like I'm really excited because no one is really um, infusing um, traditional couples therapy with art therapy. So um, I'm kind of at a, a it, yeah, kind of interesting phase in, in my therapeutic journey. Um, I think, yeah, I think we, like you said before, we get triggered so much, you know, and even with our partners, you know, we're in the same fucking dynamic, you know, power struggle or, um, you know, we piss each other off by certain things. And um, it's just a, a kick-ass kind of, you know, reducing that tennis match that we normally just do verbally at each other and go okay well let's let's you know sit down we're on the same team um you know let's create something and then talk about the image and how what that you know brings up in you and and then talking about your your partner's image and then you know there's you might be actually talking about the same thing and you love each other but you know it feels very different you know it feels like you're on different teams and then having a visual or representation of like you know coming back together um or just make sense making sense of you know you might have just drifted apart and um you might not like yourself so then you don't like to be in the relationship and then you know so it's about really you know getting back together and and, and um talking in a different way basically yeah. And I, um, I've spoken to a couple of couples who have seen you um, mm -hmm. and I think the take home message that I got from them was that, you know, that they learned so much about their partner. And mm -hmm. I, I guess because, um, or from what they've said, it's more because it's not the partner saying you do or you, I feel this when you do that. And it's not personal. It's more about the expression of what they feel or how they feel it. And I, and I think that, um, that that's the feedback that I've kind of got uh, that are people that have seen you is just that, again, like you said before, just kind of cuts through the bullshit of who cares who left the friggin mm. wet towel on the floor. Like that's not the problem. The problem mm. is actually a communication issue or mm. a feeling of um, not being heard, not being seen, not being cared about, not being loved. And that's, uh, and like you said, you can represent that in different things. So you're not saying you, it's more, well, this image makes, you know, I see this in this image. I feel this in this image that makes me think of blah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And like you said, it's like, sometimes it's not so much about the communication styles that we have, you know, we're all different. We all have different experiences and how we relate and how we get triggered. You know, it, it's about, like, again, cutting through the bullshit and, and going, well, you know, having the capacity to go, you know what, this is, this is why I'm vulnerable, mm -hmm. you know, and I want you to, to he really hear me. So mm -hmm. but actually um, talk in a different way that it's just like, oh, I, I really fucking see you now, Candace. Like, you know, rather than getting caught in the, um, in the bullshit of, you know, the words and, and the details, if that, yeah, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yep. That makes complete sense. Um, so what do you specialise in? Um, I, if, I, if I was really, re yeah, a reflective, I think I specialise in creativity and, you know, sitting in a client-centred mindfulness of experiential kind of approach. So... 
Um, obviously, you know, for me, I prefer to work with individuals and couples. Mm-hmm. Um, not a huge fan of groups because I, I think um, I like to, I think just it's my personality. Like I like to just be present with that other person or with the couple. Um, my brain is very like in the here and the now. In the group, I think um, you probably need other skills to really facilitate that. But I get anxious in big groups anyway. So I think I've swayed myself to, to specialising in, you know, um, yeah, kind of individuals um, and, and couples. So, yeah. Um, in saying that, though, you also do run Mandala classes, which mm-hmm. will have a group of, what, about 10 or 12 people maximum? Yeah, like yeah. And um, for some reason that's different because <laughs> um, that's, I guess, um, it, it's more I kind of, I um, illustrate, I, I, I kind of go, this is my process. Mm-hmm. And then, and then the, and then it's just like, and over to you. And then I, I might go around and really then kind of further kind of connect um, the other parts of what I do in drawing because you know producing a or drawing a mandala there's more to it as well in reflection so I think I think that's where I come in and so yeah, yeah. and um, we also run women's circles and mm-hmm. I think would you say that the difference and the reason why you uh, enjoy doing those um, is that more because it's not a therapy session. It's just getting together and expressing ideas and thoughts and it can be um, really um, motivating or inspirational or um, like our last one was, was quite inspirational. We're all taking yeah. the, uh, <laughs> got to do and achieve it during this time. Um, yeah. So do you, is that why you feel com- still comfortable in that setting? I think so because it's more conversational. It's more um, just checking in. Um, and yeah, like you said, rather than kind of going, yeah, yeah, I, yeah I feel uncomfortable of, uh, you know, when you're in a group and you're kind of, um, presenting, so to speak, mm-hmm. you know, I think for me, I'm still processing that, you know, I fucking hate ego. So I don't want, I, I don't say I know everything. So I think that's why. I struggle to, you know, stand in front of the, the group and go, whereas like my mandalas, I'm like, this is, this is it people, you know, and same with the women's group, you know, we're just working, we're collaborating. So maybe that's just what I can work on, but I don't know. I think I still prefer. Um, the, well, regardless, yeah. I think that we all as practitioners have a method that we prefer, whether yeah it's not right or wrong it's just what we we sit better in for exactly whatever. yeah I yeah cool. um i mentioned briefly before some health conditions that um arts therapy can help with is there anything that you want to uh, um go in more depth about or if anything i didn't mention before um no, I think you probably just, you, you probably did touch on most, I think, obviously, um, you know, I, I've been really working with um, depression and anxiety and eating disorders and grief, grief and loss and, um, yeah, self-esteem kind of um, issues um, and, yeah, uh, trauma um yeah yeah it's really i think art therapy and creative couples therapy is really um lends itself to um a lot of kind of um yeah conditions i guess if you will um yeah emotional states well yeah 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 Feeling uncertain unsettled um, yeah yeah and I guess another good point is that you know arts therapy you know it's in itself the process really um it's about regulation Mm -hmm. so you know you know through producing something 
and moving and drawing and painting and getting an image and you know you're actually physically um, moving drawing you're connecting you know your parts you're connecting with your body you're connecting with your kind of unconscious beliefs um, so there's all these you know it is quite um, three four five dimensional mm -hmm. um, and you're really regulating yourself so I think that's the real fundamental element of you know arts therapy in itself it's like you might not you know yeah I don't know if that makes sense yeah so I guess um if I can uh, uh add to that so if if you're not diagnosed with depression you're not diagnosed with anxiety you're not diagnosed with a particular medical condition but instead you feel like you could get more out of your day you feel like you could get more motivated or more um, productive or and there's something that's just kind of blocking you a little bit and you know that there's something blocking you or that you know that there's something making you play you know 20 candy crush episodes before you get onto that email um, yeah. so you, someone could see you for that so yeah. I'm, yeah. Anxious, I'm not anxious I haven't been sexually abused but um, you know I'm, there's just I feel like I could get more out of myself or become yeah. um, more productive, I shouldn't say better, but a more productive version of myself. Yeah, and exactly. And and that's the thing. It's like, um, as an art therapist, you don't diagnose, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you know, you're real. like the process is non-judgmental and, you know, and I'm non-judgmental. So, you know, it's like you could have a diagnosis and, you know, um, it's really up to you if, you if you share that with me. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's really where where you want to go and, and what you want to explore in you know in your time frame and you know uh, and really connecting to that and, and and I guess I'm you know kind of there walking alongside you and, and kind of guiding you I'm not telling you what to do or diagnosing um, elements and going well that's fucked up isn't it like mm -hmm. I actually say that's fucked up when you say it's fucked up you know so it's not yeah I think it's a, a freeing kind of um, way to look at yeah just our lives and make make meaning and and expressing truly what you're feeling and how yeah. you're feeling whatever words motion movement color shape yeah um uh, figuring that you can do that in yeah i speak a lot with my hands i know <laughs> <laughs> really coming out. um uh, what has been your favorite moment while being an arts therapist mm -hmm. I I think I like it when um, you really witness people shift internally, you know, and they have a bit of a a home a home movement. Mm -hmm. um, that's really fucking cool to 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 just be there and and witness that and um, and you don't know when it's coming. You, mm -hmm. you you know you think you might not be getting, you know you're not. Yeah, I guess that's thing it's like with that individual it's really up to how fast they go and and, and what they're actually internally processing yeah. so um but yeah so it's beautiful to witness um that and and when people you know grow grow and develop and they're just more confident in their own emotional intelligence and you're like yeah fuck yeah that's awesome so big yeah. high five moment yeah exactly yeah and I think through this whole process, you know, I guess being a therapist, um, you know, we're doing our own work at the same time. So, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like, yeah, I held that really well. Like, that was cool. Well done. Like, yeah. so I think it's, um, yeah, a evolution, I guess, for, for everyone. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, what's one fun fact about you? Oh. Um, uh it's a bit embarrassing no <laughs> I, was, I think i um okay i was in sports illustrated oh wow um, yeah Wait, how and why uh, very small but it was like uh faces in the crowd so i had a hockey scholarship when i was young and so i lived in the states for four years um so that's kind of where i did my bachelor of fine arts but i was this weird australian girl who you know was playing hockey 
Being, yeah, <laughs> being an athlete, but not really. And then, you know, going to the arts department and painting. And yeah. um, so I think uh, I, it was interesting because, um, you know, obviously uh, kind of received like all American um, kind of to title, which just really meant that you're a good player in, in the NCAAs. So, but I just thought it was funny because I was just like, but I'm not American. Like, I'm. Hey, I'm... don't call that down. If you're good enough to be an all American hockey player, you just own that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, like, everybody, if I was in Sports Illustrated, that's all. Awesome. Uh, my ego is just like, nah, nah, that, that, you know, that's just, it's nice. Like, it's nice to, um, you know, have those, you know, and people kind of say, yeah, you were, yeah, you were really good. I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> but um but yeah so that's quite funny I think um yeah that's super cool. Cool. That's super mm. cool. um last uh kind of question that I have on my list do you have any special offers for those who may be listening and still listening at this point <laughs> yeah and thank you for keep <laughs> thanks for still listening <laughs> they deserve uh, it right? <laughs> yeah. yeah because of that um <laughs> I'm, I've been wondering this myself, um, you know, having a bit of a taster of, you know, because obviously everything is online. Oh, and I wanted to say, you know, obviously um, with this pandemic, um, it, it's going to bring up anxiety and um, going to feel really um, uncomfortable. And I guess, you know, if we can reflect and go, hang on, there's so many things in our, uncertain in our lives already, even before this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's really how we really cope with that um, and regulate ourselves. And that's why, you know, art therapy and other modalities are, are really um, a good checking in and self-care. Um, so, yeah, I'm like, if you want to have a bit of a taster of, you know, what it's like to have a session with me, you know, maybe um, online, you know, either Zoom or Skype or even a telephone call, um, you know, say $30 for 30 minutes. But I was just thinking um, possibly just doing one, what, like a, a dollar a minute, you know, yep. and just contact me and, and let's have a chat. and Book in for um, bucks for 10 minutes and yeah exactly so it's like it's really up to you and and how much you know um because i know it's really financially um you know it's impacting a lot of people but you know just having the capacity to to do a bit of a debrief or a bit of a check-in uh is so fundamental at this stage so you know um yeah hopefully if you can afford you know a few minutes um that's kind of yeah what do you think i think maybe uh, that's a, yeah. a dollar a minute yeah a dollar a minute sounds like an awesome idea and mm. i guess um so today is the third of april 2020 for anyone mm. who's watching in the future and um, if anyone is watching that's why we're on zoom and we're in different buildings and doing yeah. social distancing at its finest. Yeah. Um, if there's anyone watching this past the pandemic, when everything is said lovely and, and we are in a new world at that point, I guess they could just contact you, Rachel, and you may have a special offer at that time that you can tell them um, yeah. and whatever that might look like uh, as a more face-to-face -face, um, yeah. yeah. or possibly even still over the phone. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting how this landscape um, when we do kind of come out on the, uh, on the other side, how we're going to do things differently. So, yeah, I think it's... Exactly. Mm. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. This has been <laughs> an absolute pleasure. Um, so for more information on Rachel, head to hiskinartstherapy.com. Follow Rachel on Instagram at hiskin... hiskin... Sorry, I'll just spell it. H-I-S-K-I-N-S-R. And for Facebook lovers, find Rachel at Hiskins Arts Therapy and Counselling. So to all of you in Cyberworld, thank you for listening and we'll be signing off now. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.